Let's go over the best package manager today. This package manager is special because it'll always grab the most recent release. That's amazing. It doesn't need sudo to execute and it doesn't hide it away like a flat pack snap or app image would do. So that's pretty awesome. And it's completely agnostic. So not only that, I think you guys are getting where I'm going here. You don't even need like Arch or Fedora or Debian. It works on all of Linux. It even works on Mac OS. Of course, I am talking about Homebrew. It is amazing and it has solved so many problems for me recently that I just had to make a video about it for all those geniuses out there working on it. So Homebrew specifically, I was installing Hugo. So when I came over to you know my thing and I was like sudo dnf install Hugo, and I would go through the package manager in Fedora, I was like, ah, oh, it's grabbing version.93. Well, Hugo's on 101. Not only that, I need 101 extended because I'm using some really cool stuff coming up with my website on Hugo. And I was like, ah, oh, I really love to use Mermaid and some of these other really cool flowcharts that are gonna be baked into the future of the internet. And I was like, oh, gotta, gotta learn it. But I can't use version 93 for that. So I was like, nope. What, what are my options? I guess I could download the binaries directly from GitHub and install it, that really sucks. So instead, I basically just used Homebrew. Really simple, you just grab the, the dependencies that it needs, you know, development tools and either Debian or Fedora here, you grab your own. I didn't put Arch in here, but uh, Arch people can figure that out. <laughs> I'm sure there's like a, a AUR for, for Homebrew. Uh, but the install script's really simple. Basically, you just copy this one line paste it into here like this, and it would just grab all of uh, what you need. Now, obviously that didn't grab it all. Let's copy that, paste it again. Ah, there we go. So yeah, this would actually uh, do it and put it in these directories. Now, Homebrew is special. Like I said, you don't necessarily need to run this as sudo. As you see, I'm not running a super user here. And what it is doing, it will install it into a new user directory called Linux Brew. And under Linux Brew, it makes a hidden directory called Linux Brew, dot Linux Brew. And all the binaries, casts, and all these other things that are part of Homebrew get built into there and your user's gonna have privileges to it. So I'm gonna just cancel out of that. And then all you have to do is add, usually, honestly, this is a little bit on the official method. I'm not a big fan of this method. I would really just add the, the eval into your dot bash RC, or if you're using ZSH, ZSHRC. I like this method a little bit better than the official, but pick your poison. This is the official method. This is the method I personally use. And then it's simply, hey, search your program. So then let's go brew search Hugo, which is my static site generator. And it says, hey, they found one formula. And this is kind of where uh, homebrew gets confusing. And the terminology that homebrew uses is a little bit wacky, uh, but once you understand it, it's not so bad. The really the big things you need to know is when it comes to kegs or formulas, as they put it, it's, I'm probably even saying that wrong. Those are binaries that they will create through source. So think of like the AUR in Arch Linux. This is basically the AUR for any uh, brew package. So it makes a keg and that keg gets put in the cellar and the cellars where all these binaries live all under that Linux brew install we just went through. Bottles are already made binaries that it just downloads. So keg is that, bottles that, uh, the formulas make the kegs, and then uh, taps are git repositories. So that's where you grab stuff if you ever see these. And then casks, something for Mac users. So I don't really care about casks because I mainly just use Linux. Uh, but when I am in Mac, you'll do like a, um, a brew install cask, but I, I'm not going to go into that today as that's past the scope of this video because it's really for Linux users. And then it's just brew install and then whatever it is. So you can search it here. You can uninstall. The update will update all the programs and you can run that at any time. So if you just do a brew update, you'll see it'll go through and go, okay, what do we have? Uh, not really too much updated one pack for homebrew core. But if you don't wanna update everything all in one go, you do like a brew upgrade, and then you put like Hugo for the program name. Brew upgrade Hugo would just grab the Hugo one and then update it and say, hey, uh, 101's already installed. So 
you get the latest version that gets built from Git on pretty much every Linux install. So this is like a, an AUR that doesn't suck and is actually uh, a lot more up to date because it has a bigger user base than the AUR. And then if we just wanna look at a list and brew list. So obviously this is some Linux folks got into the, the Mac ecosystem and built this, but honestly, I'm really just appreciative they kept all the Linux functionality here for Homebrew so I can use it on my Linux installs when I need to use Hugo or another program uh, to build instead of building it manually or downloading binaries or installing some weird repository using Homebrew would be so much safer and it would be so much easier to just maintain. That's why uh, Homebrew is so awesome. But with that said, what do you think? Have you used Homebrew on Linux? I know that's kind of crazy, but I don't really see too many people talking about Homebrew on Linux. And I feel like a complete idiot because I've used Homebrew for years on a Mac and I rarely use it on my Linux boxes because I'm always in or building from source by just me doing it from scratch wasting tons of time when I all this time I'm like why didn't I just install homebrew and brew install it I I, oh, I feel like it just an epiphany and hopefully there's somebody out there that was just like me that was like oh yeah that is a lot easier I'm gonna use homebrew now instead of downloading this weird repository that's barely ever maintained uh, that's what normally a normal Linux user would do because that's what I've done for a long time or they'd build it from source and then never update it because who wants to go back and, you know, get pull and then rebuild and then do all that. It's so much easier just to do brew update and then just watch it all update and pull all the changes for you. So with that, let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.